league wins at Bradley. And his counterpart, one of the greats here at Illinois, Brian Mullins, in his fifth season. 107th meeting between these in-state rivals, and we are underway here in Carbondale. Watch the matchup there. You got the X-Man on Duke. D. Duke was red hot in that game at UIC. Nice little pass off to Hannah, and just like that, Bradley scores the first two points of tonight's contest. They love to drag you off on those ball screens and lob it over the top. It's a staple of this Bradley Braves high-flying offense. Xavier Johnson, one of the top scorers in the entire country, from the corner. Domingo hits the three. Cross court, they're using that sagging and help side defense of the Braves to throw it to that weak side corner. D'Amico loves it from that left corner. See the starting five for the Braves and Hannah on cue as we featured him in the opening with Kevin. Gets the first four points for the Braves. His offensive skill package has grown by leaps and bounds in four years with the Braves. Nico trying to find Xavier cut to the glass. Yeah, Leon's with the link on Xavier Johnson. A.J. Ferguson right to the hole. He can get to the paint. Good job by Rupert. Hannah comes away with it. Bradley trying to catch Illinois sleep and get it back on defense. Hannah forces that one up. He was afraid of five second count. He had to get it released. Had nowhere to go. He was tied to the tracks. So watch this matchup. They got the great link. Last year's defensive player of the year, Xavier Johnson, the number two scorer in the nation. Leon, it's just a nasty defender. He not only blocks shots, but he also gets steals. That time he got caught behind the screen. X's will make you pay if you go below the screen. Ekman to Dean. Leons up against A.J. Ferguson. And Leons will head to the free throw line. Iso play that the Braves like to use. Get Leons in the shoot area. Let him go one on one. These two teams can just flat out defend. And we will see that even though off to a hot start here in the early two minutes of this one. You look at some of the numbers early on, impressive. Well, Brian Wardle, though, says we're second in the league in scoring. Start talking about our offense. The last four games, 84 points a game from the Braves. I said, Coach, you came in as a defensive coach. That's how you started this program in your culture. He said, we did ball. We're a great offensive team now. They've shown that in recent games. Nico kicking it out. Ferguson on another drive. Challenge. And the foul in the bucket. AJ will go for a three-point play. Excellent job of playing the second and third side by Southern Illinois. And then the dribble drive right into the paint. There go move the defense. Attack the rim, get the contact. Ferguson's had some big games for the Slokies. Some health issues earlier coming to play today. Another good matchup. Keep an eye on Trent Brown on the red hot Hickman. Connor spots up for three. Long rebound goes into the hands of the dogs. And this is one of the game, part of the games, I should say, for Xavier Johnson. I think gets unnoticed. He pours in so many points. We just saw him hit a three. Goes and drives to the bucket. But when he's driving that bucket, he's creating opportunities for himself at the free throw line. And he's also drawing other defenders when he gets in the paint. Allows those kickouts. But your point, Scotty, he shoot over eight free throws a game. And he shoots them at a high clip. 
90 plus percent. And 91 percent heading into tonight's game, which is fifth best in the country. Big key for Drake in the win on Saturday was to keep him off the free throw. Did not shoot a free throw in the first half. Johnson on the drive. Ryan Wardle calls the timeout. Terrific start for the home team as Brian Mullins. Salukis have the seven points. Lance Jones, two guys who are thriving with two of the top teams in the Big Ten, and yet Brian Mullins has put together an incredible ball club again this year. Good look at Coach Bones. There is increased the win total every year that he's been here. And as you're the point, Scotty, Xavier Johnson averaged seven a game last year. He is second in the nation at 23 plus this year. Great development of his players by Brian Mullins. Leon's backing up against D'Amico. Johnson collects the miss. Saluki's on the run. The Braves have been playing one on one ball. Southern has gone side to side and shifted the defense. Johnson, nice crossover in the dish. Rupert. Did that ball get blocked into the basket? Great dish off the penetration from Johnson. Dean, nice roll inside, too strong. And the rebound goes to Xavier once again. Rupert on the drive, a little short. Johnson, outside, Brown for three. Inside, outside, the big push offensively. Defense is scrambled. Trent Byron is over there pulling the three-point line. And Johnson finds him. 10-0 run for the Dogs. Three consecutive possessions, turnovers by Bradley. Good rotation. Brown open from the corner. Big sigh from the crowd. That would have fought down the house here that Ben Harrison with that would have gone. Hickman with the fade, a little short. And Southern doing a great job on the defensive boards early on. But Scotty again, Bradley going one on one. They're not getting the ball moved from side to side. Rupert, a little short on that three attempts. He's not four in on the year. He's trying to get number five. Now Hickman spots up for a triple. Much better by the Braves. Of the night for Bradley. Penetration by Dean. Sucked the defense in. Found Hickman on the outside. Hickman and Dean both finished with over 20 points in the victory against UIC on Saturday. It was the first time two Bradley players in the same game had over 20 points since 2018 in January against Valparaiso. Nine threes between the two of them in that game at UIC, Dean and Hickman. They were red hot, man. Ferguson, nice job off the glass. He is taking it right down Main Street against the link of Bradley and finishing at the rim. Well, you got to like the energy Southern has come out with today. They have been the aggressor from the opening tip. Not happy with the loss on Saturday against Drake. Great start here. Dean, fadeaway beauty. The little guy knows how to create space. Duke Dean to get his shot off. Only 5'8", but plays a lot bigger than that, boy. He has been huge for the Braves. Now Hickman is locked on to Johnson. Ferguson again on the drive, and we'll get the foul call. And we'll have our first timeout of the evening. Southern red hot start out here at home. They have the nine point lead. One of the best three point defensive teams in the country, the Slukies. And they got a Braves team that can light it up from outside. They're averaging nine threes a game at a high percentage, 38%. Who's gonna win that battle today? Speaking of A.J. at the line right now. Southern Loy 
Red Hot 72% from the field in the opening seven minutes. Ferguson is going to take a rest. He's got nine points on the board for Southern. Great start. And Hensley comes in and almost getting the steal. And Southern thought it was last touch by Bradley. Our officiating crew is going to talk it over. And they're going to change the call. It's going to be Saluki basketball. Trey Miller, the transfer from Incarnate Word, quick. Quick hands got the steal and another possession for Southern Illinois. Gary Maxwell, Steve Devine, and Chris Hudson are our officials for tonight's game. There's Miller there, creating that turnover. Brown for another three. And the rebound is taken by Birch, the freshman. Good looking freshman from Milwaukee. Birch, a high flyer. They'll give him the ball, let him go one on one in crate. Hickman leaning in with the left hand, a little strong. Ube with the rebound. Here comes Southern. Southern trying to get some points here with Xavier Johnson and Ferguson on the bench. Southern, as Kevin's pointed out, just going right to the teeth of this defense for Bradley. That switched up almost looks like a matchup zone right now. And there's another triple this time from D'Amico. D'Amico likes that left side. You got to make him bounce it and put it on the floor. Great defense on the ball by Trey Miller. Yeah, making Hickman work for it. Hannah from the corner. And again, no red jerseys underneath the basket for a second chance points opportunity. Well, Southern only came out of the gate so fast. Bradley is stunned. They got to get back on defense and try to get that transition game stopped. And Brian Warhol going with a 2-3 zone right now. Miller gets into the paint. Bonus points. Not known as a big scorer, Trey Miller. Birch with a nice cut to the glass. Harkey with the baseline cut. Harkey is a walk-on. When Hickman went down with an ankle injury against Indiana State, he got some time and played well. He's earned some minutes from Brian Wardle. Now, we were talking about this during the telecast on Saturday with Bradley. As you can tell that Brian Wardle really wants to extend his bench and give his regulars a few more minutes to blow because, as we know, the Valley season is so long. In fact, Brian, I just talked about it before tonight's game. And he pointed out the fact Indiana State with a big win last night against Missouri State, but some of the regulars playing a whole lot of minutes. Bradley's bench has been outstanding this six game run. They've averaged about 25 a game. One of the changes Brian Wardle made was he moved Christian Davis to the bench and put the freshman Atlason in the lineup. It's worked out well as Davis can come in for a number of positions and help Allison settle down also. Ube lost the handle, but a foul is called. And we'll take a break. Just past the midway point of our Valley Game of the Week from Carbondale. It's the Salukis and the Trophy. 9.36 remaining, opening half. Mike Reese Appreciation Night here at Banterra Center, the longtime voice of the Salukis, over 40 years as the voice of the team will be honored at half. And he will join us actually part of our second half coverage of 
tonight's game. Mike, one of the giants, not only here in Southern Illinois and at SIU, but one of the giants of the Missouri Valley Conference. And we miss him, but he's still around and one of the great people that we've met out of the millions that we've met in the Valley in our careers. He sorely missed that great voice. Southern Illinois controlling the tempo of this game. They're running on opportunities with turnovers, and then they're making Bradley pay side-to-side -side defense in the half court. Johnson just misses the three-point attempt. Brian Mullen's got some good mileage from his bench. Dean going coast to coast. The flow to that was sweet by Dean. On full speed, still able to the body control got his shoulders squared to the rim and finished it. Ferguson hits a three. Southern already with five triples made in the opening half. We keep asking who's going to be the Robin to Batman. It may be A.J. Ferguson. But Duke Dean's got an answer for the Braves. Dean coming off that 26 point performance last weekend in the Windy City. Boy, six triples in that game by Duke Dean. And now you're seeing the zone from the Braves. They like that one, two, two. Hensley in the middle going to work. Slides out. Leons collects the miss. Here come the Braves. Dean. A little short on that attempt, but they get the offensive rebound there. First of the night. They got the matchup. The Bube on Dean. And Dean couldn't resist going one on one against the big man. Nice cut to the glass. Oh, can't complete it. Great slip by Davis. But came up short on the finish. Up raise. Back to man to man. Johnson. They are not shy about going to the rim here tonight. Oh, he, he had Duke Dean left some laundry on the court on that move. Davis is three. Rims out. Bradley shooting quick, trying to get up court. And the bucket and a foul. <laughs> and another timeout on the floor. Southern Illinois. They, a little bit of a surprise at how well they have done it. Just year three from Josh Shirts. I already thought a step back for Brian Mullins losing as we mentioned two of the top players going to the Big Ten in the transfer portal but how about what Coach Grove has done at Murray State kind of an unknown there did bring back a lot more guys in year two in his return to Murray State I think they've been a pleasant surprise early on I love their backcourt they have great speed in the backcourt the racers if you turn over it's two points at the other way Brian Moore Jr. One of the fastest guards in the league. Hickman, nice pass to Hannah and Darius. We'll head to the free throw line. That timeout, that timeout from Brian Ward. More movement by the Braves, side to side. Lot of player movement, ball movement. The handoff up top. Hickman trying to get the pocket pass to Hannah inside. And Hannah. Got that quick start with an early four. Now it's the OB under. Southern really does a good job of staying attached on the perimeter. Dean from the corner as the shot clock was winding down. Rupert with a nice rebound. Excellent defensive stand. If you come in to the Banterra Center, you have to be able to put your gloves on. It is going to be physical. They belly up defensively. They keep their hands off Southern Illinois. That's why they lead the league in least points allowed. A quick hands and the turnover. Hannah doing it on the defensive end. Rupert quick feet on the perimeter on Davis nowhere to go Ekman 
short on the three. Bradley, very little rhythm in their offense. Credit Southern Illinois. The Egyptian dogs are locked in at the defensive end. Now Davis on Johnson. Xavier with time winding down. kamiko has got to force it up. A little strong, and there's Dean right there. Pushing it up for the Braves. Down by 17, and an offensive foul is going to be called on Darius Hanna. Tough break on Hanna. He's trying to run up court and actually stay out of the way. Puts his hands above his head. Creates the contact, though. Hanna's trying to get out of the Look, he's trying to get out of the way, but he does set an illegal moving screen. Tough break for the big man. The Braves, Darius Hanna. The amazing thing about, or one of the many of Xavier Johnson is not only a guy who, as we know, can score a lot, he's also a great passer. He's one of the top assist guys in the league. And there's one right there. He draws so much attention and he has great vision and awareness. Foul's going to be on Rupert. And Maxwell waving that one off. That's just the third team foul, excuse me, fourth, third team foul on Southern. Trey Miller checks back in for the Dogs, and Leons will come back in for the Braves. Southern right now on an 8-0 run over the last two and a half minutes. They've really spread the scoring around Southern Illinois. And Leon's with the turnover. That is the fifth turnover for Bradley in this opening half of play. amico has got a couple of threes he's knocked in. Brown has knocked in two triples. And Ferguson has been outstanding. He's 4-4 four four from the field. He's got 12 points. Brown thought about the three. Now time winding down. Johnson down to two, down to one. And they do not get the shot off. It's a shot clock violation. Bradley connected at the defensive end on that possession. There were a couple of times there where he saw two red jerseys on Johnson. I'm looking for the open man, as was Xavier. Now, public enemy number one is number 10 with the white jersey. Oh, good job by Hickman. Create the contact. They're going to say the foul is before the shot. They're not going to give him the continuation. And that's one of the things I think a lot of regular Valley fans, when they think of Hickman, you're always thinking the outside shot, the three-point shot. But he's really involved in the triple drive as well, Kev. His entire game has evolved. And Brian Wilson, there's, there's a couple guys in the Valley that your team just can't lose. He said it's for us. It's Connor Hickman. We've got to have him on the court. He is the rock, the port in the storm for the Braves. They're going to play the zone again. Lands up top, great length. There's the soft spot, though, right at the free throw line. Open look. Johnson hits the three. Hannah, late on the recognition, tardy on the recovery. Johnson with the second three make. He burns the zone. It is tough to play zone against Southern for multiple trips. They get a comfort area, and you got to keep your eye on Johnson. Hickman finds the lane, a little strong, and there's Rupert with the rebound. Johnson wants to push it. Oh, nice move by Xavier. He thought about the dribble drive, caught Leon's going for it, and opened himself up for a three, just couldn't drop. Birch, the freshman, with the fade off the glass. 
Bradley trying to drive it to the nail, get their feet in the paint. They've got to make some stops here at the defensive end, the Braves. And Brian Mullins is going to burn his first half timeout with 2.27 remaining in our opening half. Xavier Johnson and the Salukis red hot. And for Bradley, who is such a talented team, to see their offense for the better part of this opening almost 18 minutes right now, they're just out of sorts. They just can't get into any rhythm at all, Kev. I would credit Southern Illinois' defense with that. Very physical on the perimeter. Difficult for Bradley to turn the corner. They like to drive it into the paint. They like to throw the lob up to their bigs. Have not been able to do that here in this early going. That is turnover number four for Southern in this opening half. That's the ball pressure now by Southern Illinois. They climb right into your shorts. Leon's on Rupert. Now cutting to the hole is Dean. Dean trying to get it back inside. There's that drive in the nail. And Marr will head to the free throw line, the freshman from Iceland. Like that possession for Bradley, side to side. Kept driving it into the heart of the defense, and finally, Addison is able to draw the contact and the foul. It's an important minute 46 here for Bradley. They've got to make a stop. They need momentum going into the locker room. We remember when that man first uh, took over the helm in Peoria. Remember, he's basically put a whole new roster together. But one of the things I think if you and I remember is there were a lot of European yes. on that team, and that continues. He really goes overseas as the young man from Iceland, a part of his roster this year. They've had great success with that. Bile Tavananen. Mm -hmm. We see Malve Leons, who was Defensive Player of the Year. And Brian Royal told me when he took the job late, there were no players in the continental U.S. That's why he went overseas to grab guys and has grown from there. Brown spots up for the three, and Southern will get it back. Last touch by Duke Dean. And they have 15 players so far in the nine years under Brian Wardle, 15 different countries uh, that have been a part of his roster. Yeah, big number four, they're right at the basket. Jonovic, 7-1. Ahmet Jonovic out of Serbia, emerging big man. Johnson lets it fly over the big man, and we have contact underneath, and Bradley is going to pick up the foul. And that'll put Southern in the bonus situation with a buck 17 left here in the opening half of play. Well, Scotty Irube has struggled from the free throw line. It's an adventure when he steps up there. Easiest time, my man. Crowd likes that one. <laughs> Normally, we, when we say these types of things and we're praising them, that was the reverse. You got the flip going. That was the reverse. Announcer's <laughs> cheek for Scotty Bube. And then the Bantera Bank is open <laughs> after hours <laughs> off the window. Oh, Ube with the steal. And stripped away by the Braves. That's why the big men don't lead the break. Good steal, but then he gave it right back. Ian Lane is trying to go one on one in what I call the funnel area. And that will go out of bounds back the other way to Southern Illinois. A good rebound by the big man. Not a bit, but he couldn't convert it. Now you got 11 second differential. Shot clock, game clock. Pickman 
on Johnson. Look for the ball screen by Ibube. Johnson clears it out and the drive. Oh, nice. Nice. We're all expecting the ball screen. It never came. Open the lane, a straight line drive by Johnson. Ties the largest lead of the half at 21 for Southern. Dean with time running down. Davis, no. Rebound, Salukis, and what a first half for Southern Illinois as they will head into the locker room with a 21-point lead over the Bradley Braves. Some turnovers, let them get out in the open court. It put Bradley back on their heels, and they just never recovered in the first half. We'll see if they can come out in the second half and generate some offense with the Braves defense. Southern with the opening possession of the second half. Started the second half with Hickman on Xavier Johnson. The game was started with Lands on him. And last touch by Bradley, Southern basketball. That's one of the things you know this as a former coach. Coaches look at those 50-50 balls. Who's going after them, who's not? Floor burn you. That is what Southern Illinois is known for. They're going to win that 50-50 ball battle. There's an extra possession. Two points. Largest lead now for the Dogs to open up the second half at 23. Leon's inside. Too strong. Gets his own rebound. And they're going to say jump ball call. Bradley has the possession. Well, again, that ISO move for Leon's at the elbow with the catch. Fakes the handoff. Tries to get to the rim. Great defense by Ferguson. I've been impressed by A.J. Ferguson. Came out strong, and he's done outstanding job defending Malvi Leons. Oh, Hannah. Nice little pick and roll, and he'll go for three. We talked about the improvement of that young man. There is Hannah. Soft hands can get to the rim, and this is a the ball screen. The quick slip, look at the quickness. The catch, finish on contact as Trent Brown gets there too late and too small. And a lane violation, so Darius will get another opportunity. Darius Hanna has a younger brother, Davian, Nicolette High School in Wisconsin. Davian is ranked one of the top 50 players in the country. A four-star recruit. Some good bloodlines in that family. Mom and Pop. Both playing Division One. Side-to-side -side ball movement. Brown on the baseline. Ferguson lost the handle off his shoe. Three on one. Leon's will head back to the line. That's what the Braves need. Some turnovers. Get a chance to play downhill. Attack the rim. And this starts with great defense. Active hands by the Braves. It's off his foot. Hickman picks it up. Leon tries to knife through the defense and now at the free throw line. And getting points while the clock is not moving when you're down big is huge. And allows you to set your press. I'm not sure if Bradley would start pressing this early. A lot of times they like to show a three-quarter court pressure after made free throws. There it is with the big man Leon's at the top with that great seven-foot-two wingspan. Back to a man. Once again, Johnson gets his feet in the paint. Brown against Hannah. 
Now the shot clock at five. Xavier with the step back. Oh, beautiful. Wicked. Wicked. Created space. Finished. And last touch by Rupert. Bradley basketball. Again, Hannah on that quick screen and rim dive. Braves offense concentrating on high percentage shots early on, down by over 20. And a race for it. And Johnson comes up with a loose change. Good hustle. Now he gets it inside. Rupert on Leons. Excuse me, Ferguson, that is. Xavier Johnson may spend more time on the floor and pick up more floor burns than any player in the Valley. Rupert and the foul. Well, we saw the screen and roll action by the Braves. There's the same thing by Southern Illinois. Rupert, middle of ball screen. The rim die. He has got soft hands. Big man out of St. Peter's led him on that elite eight charge two years ago. Clarence Rupert. He's a Philly guy, but he's a Steelers fan. Figure that one out. <laughs> I can't. And if you're in Philadelphia, good luck with that. <laughs> Couple of double-doubles this year for Clarence. He loves it down there in Southern Illinois. Well, Bradley's got to get some ball movement and some player movement. Atlas, a nice little spin move. Can't complete it. There's another 50-50 ball that goes right into the hands of Southern. Now Kyle Thomas in the game for the Braves. You saw him against UIC at double-figure minutes against the Flames. Yeah, just his sixth game played this season. Now tonight, number seven. Johnson on Hickman. Johnson could just float in the air. How about that last one? He was up in the air forever for delivering that pass to D'Amico. Thomas gets the rebound. Atlas and will head of the line. If you're Bradley, I believe that's how you got to attack. You got to reverse the ball. It's shot fake and then drive it to the paint. Get some contact and get to the free throw line. And you know this, as that proceeds, the kickouts are gonna leave Hickman and Dean with some wide open looks outside. They've but struggled. to convert some of these free throws. Yeah, they have struggled though, Dean and Hickman, as good as they've been through that six win run for Bradley, they have been locked down. Hickman got the one three up Dukes. Dean's penetration early in the half. Dean shook loose for a couple. But then Davis will check in. Yeah, between the two of them, they've only knocked in two triples. And 10 against UIC between those two guards. Southern doing a really good job of taking away their looks. Now Hickman. And ain't up Johnson. I didn't like the Leon's matchup early. As they start the game with Leon's on Xavier Johnson. He picks up the rebound. Hickman cut off at the baseline. Great recovery by Xavier Johnson. Well, Thomas got off the shot and slides out. Brown rims out and Bradley basketball. Timeout on the floor, just underway, second half. It's the Valley on ESPN, Salukis and Brave. As Southern shooting 55% from the field. In fact, they have 14 assists on their 18 field goals. And right now, Bradley 
Remember, Kevin mentioned a couple times how they are averaging over 80 points a game in the last four games. They have been held scoreless over three minutes out of that timeout. And that broke that string. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it up <laughs> to the big man anywhere around the rim. Cal Thomas making the most of his minutes. Thomas, a transfer from Eastern Illinois. You may remember his father, Daryl Thomas. He's the his father is the guy who made the pass to Keith Smart for the Hoosiers, right? In that championship run was that 1987. It was the first Final Four that I attended. Dean with the kick out. Leons hits the three from the corner. Penetration, you get your feet in the paint. Throw it out, those three-point shooters. Got it down to 16. Now you need stops. Lots of time left for the Braves, but they've got to do it at the defensive end. All right, we'll see if Bradley can do it here. Leon's back on it. Johnson. Johnson on the double team. Ooh, quick hands by Davis. Davis. And the miss. Amico gets the rebound. Great play defensively. Recovery by Xavier Johnson to alter that shot. Big time defensive play. And Hickman is going to get called for the foul on the drive from Davis, the freshman from St. Louis. SIU continuing to attack that middle. Get yourself to the logo, plant your feet, score it, or end up at the free throw line. This is what experienced teams do, Scott. When the other team's making a run, get yourself to the free throw line, slow down their momentum, draw fouls. Do not quick shoot it at the offensive end. If your opponent is making a run. Good looking freshman here. He is. Out of Ashan High School. They produced a player or two. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> All the way back to the the Nash twins. Oh yeah. Floyd Irons. Back in the day, juggernaut at Bashan. They were multiple state championships in the state of Missouri. And after his son played for him at Bashan, he wound up becoming a coach in the St. Louis area as well. Arias backing in on D'Amico. Oh boy, that's a difficult shot off the window. Man, oh man, that's a tough angle. Emerging big man, great footwork. By Darius Hanna. I told him I'm going to highlight you today in this open of this game. Bring your A game. <laughs> Hanna's been good. I was talking to Coach Wardle on Saturday before their game against UIC, and it's like, yeah, he's been with us for four years. I said, wait a minute, somebody's been with the team for four years. He goes, yeah, that's kind of unusual now, right? <laughs> Tip by Southern will be Bradley basketball. But Dean trying to use that pick and roll with Hannah again. And Bube comes in for Coach Mullins. Hannah with 11, 5 of 7 from the field. He came in this game at 64% from the field. Highly efficient. And we talked about in the open. This is what Ward likes length. In that front line, and they developed them through the years into offensive players. Birch against Brown, and he'll go for three. Oh, big one, big basket by the Braves. All right, this young man has a bright future. Woo. Out of Milwaukee, a hot recruiting area for Brian Wall from his days playing at Marquette. 
coaching up at Green Bay. Very familiar with that Wisconsin territory. You can also see the young man fits kind of the prototype of a Brian Wardle player. He's also got that link with his arms, too. Link, uh, vertical of 40 plus. He is explosive. Got it down to 13, Scotty. Johnson's got to make a play for the Slukies. Stop the bleeding. Nice crossover by Johnson. The kick out and stolen by Davis. Outlet to the freshman. And Birch will head back to the free throw line. The lead is Kevin Mitchin right now down to 13. The tide is turning. We saw early in this game, Southern Illinois was the aggressor, making steals playing downhill. Now it is Bradley here in the second half. Turnovers going downhill. The speed of Birch. It's now eight turnovers for Southern Illinois. They only had four in the first half. So here in the opening eight minutes, they tied their turnover production in the opening 20. It's been a result of a much more active Bradley defense. Oh, again, see again, after the made free throw, Bradley likes that token pressure. They put Link Leons on the front end. And Leons has really kept Xavier Johnson. It's been Leons and Hickman on Johnson here in the second half. Well, this crowd has definitely become quiet here at Van Terrison. And they've had a lot to cheer about, except for the last almost three minutes. Is Bradley's three, 12 of 12, perfect from the free throw line, but three minutes since Southern has scored. And Johnson now is out. And they're gonna get a foul called on Davis. That's his first personal. Well, I'm looking at Xavier Johnson now. He's at the end of the bench, and the trainer is working on his left it's like his left calf, his left thigh. Yeah. We'll keep an eye on that. I think they're trying to get some blood off the sleeve that he wears on his left leg. Remember how many times he's been on the floor, Xavier Johnson. Ferguson on the drive. Oh, he's strong. How many times have we already said that tonight with him? Yeah, Johnson back there on the bench. Ready to go, coach. Put me in. <laughs> now look at his look at his left knee right there. He's got a lot of blood. And a floor burn that may have broken open. Ferguson is a 73% free throw shooter this season. This is his 10th game. He had a foot injury that kept him out. Great start for Southern in this game. And he's at that upper body strength, great length, can turn the corner and get to the rim. 12-point lead for Southern, under 12 remaining in the second half. Bradley chipping away, Hickman on the drive, and it's down to a 10-point lead. Good reversal by Bradley, and it leaves him on that left side, kind of a naked defense where he can go baseline. They lift the defense up off the baseline, and Hickman gets right to the rim. Brown spots up for three. Rebound taken by Birch. Bradley's made their last eight field goals. They can trim it down to a single-digit deficit on this possession. Hickman leans in with the left hand, and the lead is down to eight at 55-47, and a timeout. Here come the Braves. And folks, on so many announcers, this one included working Southern games for many years, but 
the amount of guys that are playing and, and, and I should say announcing games on the Division One or just the college athletic yeah. table because of Mike Reese, Mike Kelly, of course, a good friend from the zoo, Sean Kelly over at Flor University yeah. of Florida, Connor Onion is here, is doing a fantastic right. job with the Big Ten Network and FS1 as well. Yeah, and uh, Russ Eisenstein does Russ, Ohio yep, U, and I'm he sorry. worked for us, and uh, Andy Burcham is an Indiana State graduate. He is the Auburn radio play-by-play -play guy, and he worked with us uh, as a full-timer for a couple of years. And it is the uh, it's the thing, fellas, I'm most proud of. Um, there's four doing Division One. There's guys like Connor doing TV. But we have 75 people who've worked for us in some capacity over the years who are in the business somehow, not all in performance, but in sales or in management. They've done some great things. That's the thing I'm most proud of. Big shot there made by Tomiko as Southern going a little cold here in the second half. Inside and a foul is called. All right, Kevin, so we're going to take a break. We'll have more with Mike Reese. And the commercials on television? Yes, we do. Can you believe <laughs> that? This is the fact that when we went to shoot around, the phone system was down on the campus at UNLV. Remember this? So I've done this a time or two. I, yeah. I know how to handle it. I'm like, Greg, we just got to keep the phone charged. We might have to do this by the phone. Well, Greg's freaking out. He's calling Mike during the football game. I don't know what's going to happen, Mike. We might not do the broadcast. We made it all right, didn't we, yeah, Mike? We did. <laughs> Kevin, I didn't ask him, have to ask him twice when he found out it was Vegas. <laughs> hey, can you fill in me on the, for me on a Southern game? And we had, the, well, we had Spoon you know, on the show, too, right? Oh, yeah. That's yeah, <laughs> right. Spoon coaching them then. Yeah. What, what happens in Vegas? It stays in Vegas. Yeah, exactly and, it, right. and it did. Apparently, that's why it's because the phones don't work. I got to ask you this, though, uh, Mike. What, is there a favorite call or favorite moment um, from all those years? Um, and, uh, basketball is the biggest thing that I've done, uh, Kevin. Uh, uh, I have to say, uh, there have been a lot of big moments uh, a College World Series for Southern, a 1AA football, FCS National Championship, a three peat for the Salukis in the Valley in the mid uh, 90s. But nothing has been on the national stage like the 2002 and 2007 Sweet 16 team and Sweet 16 appearances. And so I would always side with the 2002 because it was the first one. That was Weber coaching and Kent mm -hmm. Williams and Jermaine Dearman and Tony Young and uh, in Chicago. And so Southern had half the crowd and U of I had the other half crowd because they played Creighton in the prelim game. Uh, to go to the uh, Sweet 16, and uh, so that's the one I picked. That's the biggest stage that Southern's been on that, that I was involved in. But some big stages, of course, on the football gridiron as well. In fact, yeah. I was just talking to Nick before the last game of the regular season and watching some of the playoffs and seeing Joe Flacco, <laughs> still yeah. quarterback in the NFL, played yeah. here in that matchup against yeah. Delaware. For Delaware, SIU. right, yeah. and, and Southern... Um, Every time Southern hit him, Southern fell off of him. And it was that they just couldn't sack Flacco. And that was a great quarterback uh, uh, matchup. And um, I think also um, the beating Indiana, the first Valley team to win a big a game against a Big Ten right. team. Uh, I think that's the one I have to pick. The 1983 National Championship uh, team uh, gets mad at me every time I do that. I picked that one. What do, you, what do we have to do more than a national championship? As well, um, that was a much smaller proposition than uh, beating Indiana and doing that. And um, You know, Hill's been around for about 25% of my career, and uh, and so he's a big and special part of that as well, as is Brian over there, Mullins, um, one of the great players and one of the great people that SIU's had. And here's a, I talked to Brian about you today at the shoot-around. He said, you stayed in touch when he went overseas to play. Loyola, you were Loyola. always reaching out. Yeah. And yeah. he really appreciated that. Wow. Talked about what the family and community environment yeah. there here yeah. is. It, it, and, Kevin, you can do those things. And, and one of the things about doing, you can do those things and not be sloppy Homer about it. You know, you can be credible and talk to them and just stay in touch. It's just being friends is, is all it is. It's what uh, people in banking do when uh, when uh, when one leaves the company and the other stays. You just stay in touch. That's what I did, and I realized that's one of the responsibilities, especially when you do it 40-plus years. For many of them, you know, I was the only one that they still knew was at SIU, and so it would help with the connection. And so that's part of the job, too. Dean spots up for three. 
Lead back down to single digits at 63-54 in communication. You built up so many friendships with so many other people, not only us, but guy across the way here, yeah. longtime voice, Dave Snell of Bradley, Art Haynes of Springfield. It's all kind of a announcing fraternity that has been built up over the years. Uh, Thanks Snell, to you. And Snell is my best uh, friend in the business. Uh, I look over there at him sitting over there next to the uh, Bradley bench, which he's done now for 45 years, and he looks like me sitting between the, you two guys, small. <laughs> he just looks tiny over there. I had lunch with him today. He looked taller in person, but across the way, man. No, he's one of the great people. I think he's the best in the league. I've said this before. I think he's the best in the league because he can call the play, and also he has the entertainment factor. He can do emceeing. Um, with the best of them and that's just another part of this job. He does it very well So I think with the total package, that's why I think Snell is the best. Michael congratulations. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you for everything man. There is Duke Dean up there again trying to get this back to single digits Southern has had an answer every time they've got it down to single digits Birch over the back. I get that missed free throw attempt. Both teams with an even 28 points in the paint. But Bradley, a plus six in that department in the second half. So look, he's had a much larger lead in the opening half of play. And Johnson with a quiet 16 for Southern Illinois. Ferguson cut off. He's really been working that dribble drive tonight. Now on the baseline. Had to readjust his shot. Still a loose ball. And what's the call here? There's those 50-50 balls, Scott, you talked about in the first half. White So I guess they're going to say shot. Yeah. It was it was no it was not a violation. So that's what they were checking yeah. on the shot clock here. You're right. They're checking to see if the ball hit the rim for the reset. And then Southern got the possession of the tie up. Yeah, they just flipped the possession arrow to Bradley's side up that inbound. Last touch by Bradley as Southern retains possession. Burks 21 remaining. Saluki's with the 65 54 lead. Both teams with identical records, both overall and in league play. Trying to stay within striking distance of the leaders in the league, which is the Drake Bulldogs in Indiana State, who had the win yesterday. Ferguson, a wide open look in and out. Got robbed there. Drake with a strong lead over Illinois State. Tonight's game. And has been effective inside. He's got the mismatch on the block on Brown. Fourth personal foul on Trent Brown. A good recognition. Mismatch inside Hannah with his length. Six foot nine. He had Brown mashed up on him. Hannah misses the free throw attempt. Yeah, uncharted. That is the uncharted turnover. Hannah, a less than 50% shooter from the line. Ends up being a good foul for the Southern Illinois Salukis. Johnson with the step back. Slides out. Good box out by Atlason. Leon's running the floor. Dean for three. Leon's gets the rebound. Crowd one of a foul. There's the length we talk about with Bradley. They wear you out on the offensive glass. Allison trying to throw it up, thought he had a foul. Leon's for three. 
And that is down to eight, and a timeout is called at the 5:05 mark. Efficiency on the offensive end and quick hands at the defensive end. A recipe for the comeback. Braves have made eight of the last ten field goals, and Southern has yet to score in the last two fifteen. So it's kind of the defense creating this turn of events for Bradley in this second half, chipping away down by eight. Johnson usually can get on a run here. He has been quiet. Hickman has been locked on. For the X. Baby. No, Ferguson gets the rebound. Great rebound by Ferguson. Good read inside. Able to get the missed shot. Another opportunity for SIU. This is huge. And to get it to Abube, and he got position. And he's going to go to the free throw line as the freshman, Atlison, is whistled for the foul. Again, not a bad foul because of Scotty Bube's struggles at the free throw line. You know, it seems as if Southern is playing a lot more conservatively with the huge lead, and it's kind of also messed up the rhythm from an offensive standpoint. I think he owes some of that to Bradley, though. They've been much more aggressive defensively and locked in and connected in the second half. The adjustments they made at halftime by Brian Warland's staff have paid off. Hickman on the drive on the left hand. And Hickman struggled in the first half, has come alive here in the second. And Saluki fans trying to get their team charged up. Lead down to a half dozen as we cross the four minute mark remaining in this one from Banterra Center. The Hickman had three at halftime, and here comes. Oh, that one Johnson. is blocked on oh. Johnson. Again, the link of Bradley. Dean. It's down to three with the three from Duke Dean. Oh, with the guts of a cat burglar. Dean in transition. The pull-up triple. And it started with great defense by Bradley on the block shot. Down by as many as 23 to start this second half. And the lead is now at three for the dogs. Jamie wants it back. He's got the mismatch he wants with Atlas and the freshman on him. Johnson blocked again by Hannah. Dean pushing it. Hannah with the rim run. Lions. And they'll set up their half court set. Good push, good pull out. Pittman trying to get the bailout, and it's the turnover. That's number eight on the Braves. Just the third one in the second half as Hickman slow to get up. 251 rep, but boy, Bradley has quieted things down here in Carbondale. Thanks. Southern is scoreless in their last four and a half, where they're 0 for 6 from the field. Hickman has been excellent on Xavier Johnson. Gotta get the switch off. Oh, Johnson lost it. Here comes Leons. Hickman for the tie. First tie of the game at the 225 mark. 65 65. Off a turnover. Numbers. Great ball movement. Hickman rings the bell from the corner. What a comeback for the Braves here on the road. Good move inside. Ferguson gets the easy two. That breaks a five minute drought for the Salukis. Good play. Rugged him off the high post. And the patience to finish inside by Ferguson. Boy, Duke Dean, a quick cut to the glass and kisses it off the glass and in. The delivery by Hannah. Bounce past the Dean, slicing through the defense. You were telling me last Saturday, Drake had a lot of success against Southern on that exact play. Lift the defense off the baseline, play through the center man. Backdoor cuts. Hannah with four assists. Oh, and a turnover. 
Be careful, big man. Oh, Hickman thought long and hard about throwing that one up. One minute left. Hickman, left hand, gets the bucket and the foul. And for the first time since the 1911 mark of the first half, Bradley has a lead. Weight room move by Hickman. He's got Rupert isoed on that right wing again. No help. He scores on the big man, Hickman. I'll tell you what, Kevin, you talk about gut check time for these Braves. This has been impressive. They were dead in the water in the first half. Yep. No energy. Came out sluggish. Brian Rowland needs a can that halftime speech that he gave his team. They have been fantastic here in the second half, and it's been their defense and quick hands connected and great communication. Johnson, and we're going to get the foul. Slipped down, but he was bumped. Right now, it's a 16 to 2 run for the Braves to get this three point lead, their largest of the night. And again, as we mentioned, their first lead since the first minute of tonight's game. Well, Johnson, a 90 plus free throw shooter. You're going to assume that Bradley's going to get this ball back down one. Excuse me, up one. 11 second differential on the shot clock and the game clock. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Both teams in the bonus situation. Nine team fouls on Southern and eight for Bradley. And the possession arrow. Favoring the Braves. A pressure by Southern, but you don't want to foul. Brown on their feet here at Pantera Center. The timeout is called by Brian Wardle. Now, what do you do if you're the Braves? Obviously, you want to kill as much clock as possible second half and flip this game but now this big possession southern's going to stay attached defensively hickman is our guy in these situations and brown has four fouls marking up hickman Hickman on the drive, no good, rebound. Here comes Southern. Johnson to Rupert, wisely pulls it out for the last shot. Again, two timeouts remaining for Southern, and Mullins will call one of them with 11 points remaining. Well, Bradley put it in the hands of their go-to guy, Hickman, cleared out the side. 11.2 remaining. 70 to 69. Leon's on Johnson. Link on the X. Defensive player of the year against the top player in the league this year, Xavier Johnson. Here we go. They were clear out the side for him. Johnson steps back. Short. Loose ball. Still a fight for it. And that'll do it. Bradley has come back. Down 23, and they win it on the road by a final of 70 to 69, and they have now won seven straight.